Hello, I'm Cheryl Disanayaka, and I find it very interesting that Callan has decided not to introduce me. I gave him a tutorial this morning on how to pronounce my name, and um, he did say it before, I was hoping I'd be able to, as a professor I can do this, I was hoping I'd be able to give him a high distinction, but I could only give him a pass, and so I think he hasn't fronted up to um, introduce me to speak with you. Um, so, hello everyone. Um, so, I'm the director of the Olga Tennyson Autism Research Centre at La Trobe, and we've been working with DXC Technology and the Autism CRC to create pathways to employment for people with autism. And um, Dr. Headley is here today, who will talk about our research in this area shortly. But before I begin, I really do want to acknowledge uh, Michael Fieldhouse from DXC. Without Michael, we would not be in this room. All of us would not be in this room today. Um, I had someone some years ago, a couple of years ago, describe Michael as a force of nature. And I think that's a really good description um, uh, you know, for him because he has, with a very strong team behind him, um, made a reality for many people with autism more than anyone else has done in Australia to date, with DXC being the largest employer of people with autism. And I think, um, you know, the, he set a very high standard, and I think all we can do is, is simply follow. And I want to... So what I want to do today is to tell you about a virtual marketplace that we've been developing over the last year to assist people with autism to access employment opportunities suited to them, but one that also is designed to facilitate employers to access their talent. And the idea of um, building this virtual marketplace um, was really sown in a conversation that Wojciech Nadachowski and I and Michael Fieldhouse had um, at my desk with a, a, a rather dirty whiteboard and where we plotted out a plan of what a, um, a virtual marketplace might look like. And then the idea was achieved. Now, where's the pointer? Has someone walked off with it or...? Right hand side near the lectern. It's a part of the slide itself. Yes? Yeah. Ah, the autistic person tells me how to use it. Thank you, Jeanette. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the idea was achieved where in collaboration with our partners who are listed here, we were successful in securing a Salesforce Foundation grant to begin building this marketplace. AS Careers is so named because we want to support autistic people not just to find a job, but really to build a career. And it's been very encouraging today to hear people who've come up to speak really talk about this. It's, we're no longer about jobs. We're really um, talking about careers. And I mean, um, Jeanette's a hard act to follow and has charted very much a career that she's built from, for herself, which she, she felt mightn't have been possible at a different point in time. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in place, to keep in mind. And in fact, um, it's also part of our thinking in building this. So what is AS Careers? Well, we would like to think that it's more than just an employment website. It's a site which brings together candidates with autism, potential employers, but also service providers who are able to support them. So um, our guiding principles in building this cloud-based technology solution, um, where use of this platform will, we think, enrich it in an iterative fashion such that it can also impact on our knowledge on how best to succeed in driving up the rate of employment of autistic job seekers. So the site also grows and the information within it grows as the information platform for job seek as an information platform for job seekers, employers and service providers on um, best practice. 
So what makes AS Careers different then? Um, well, I told you um, already, it brings together th three key groups um, into the one space um, who are concerned and interested in building careers for people with autism. It's also designed to very much highlight the unique skills and abilities that people on the autism spectrum bring into the workplace. So this is where we really think of it as this sort of virtual marketplace where community building is as important as knowledge building, which is as important as the transactional elements of job seeking. So this will also be a community platform for people with autism, for um, job seekers with autism, where they can share their stories, um, inform others about their journey, and also um, inform employers who want to employ them about best practice. However, we'll also build knowledge about best practice, the tool that um, Marita talked about, the IS. So we'll be looking for different tools and knowledge. Um, DXC have provided all of the IP they've developed through um, the last couple of years of employing people with autism very successfully. They're making that um, accessible um, this morning. Professor Bruyere talked about that on their uh, being available through Cornell. We're also making it available and it will be loaded up onto AS Careers. So as we research and build more knowledge, it'll continue to inform um, and develop AS Careers, where this knowledge is loaded into this platform. All right. So what does it do? Well, a key aspect is to assist job seekers to profile their strengths and talents and to also assist the employers to profile their jobs so that they can access these talents. Our collaborative research also serves to inform the development of this site regarding the necessary supports and the enablers and challenges to employment of people on the spectrum. So the way AS Careers is different um, to that um, to, for the job seeker with autism is it, it, that we can help them to build their profile in a supported way such that they can highlight their abilities but also the challenges they may face to help them find a job that's most suited to them and their unique skill profile. So the way that um, we do this is that the, um, and I'm not sure if you can quite see this, we have a set of skill cards where the person with autism can add these skills into their skill bank to build up. So they build up their strengths in a supported way. We provide some of that support through the virtual marketplace, but they can also add other skills in um, to build up their unique profile. And I guess importantly, this skill profile can change over time. As they get new jobs and learn new skills, they can update their profile. So this is sort of a live CV, um, but it's not a traditional CV that um, one would use in um, gaining employment. Importantly, the person with autism can then also profile their autism by adding whatever sensory difficulties and challenges they might, might find that might limit them accessing some sorts of jobs. And it's up completely up to them what they want to add, and they can, they can add many things, but then they might not make that available to the employer, depending on the, the job that they're going for. So again, it helps them to identify characteristics about their autism that might create challenges for them in a workplace or that might um, be very useful and you know, that this workplace might not be difficult for them because of, of their, the, the, their sensory profile.
In the same way, the employer can also post their positions and build a profile of available jobs and the requirements of those jobs, including the skills required for the job, sensory features that might be associated with the position and so on. And they will also, the employers will also have access to the knowledge articles that I talked to you about earlier and can connect with service providers in the same space as needed to support the person with autism in the workplace. So for the candidate, this is what their homepage may look like. So when they get on, um, imagine you're uh, a candidate who is looking for employment and they log on, they've developed their profile and they might have a couple of job matches um, on their homepage telling them that, you know, this is a job that's been selected from them on the basis of what they have added into their own profile. Well, I think it's all pretty self-explanatory and that panel on the far side is what the employer sees. So what we have done here is essentially built a prototype. And our next steps is to take this into a beta version for testing. And finally, we plan to put out an expression of interest to fund and inform future development. And we see this resource not just as a resource nationally, but one that can potentially be a global resource to improve the rates of employment of people on the spectrum worldwide. And it will also increase access for employers to their talents that neurodiversity we know brings into the workplace. So what might success of AIS careers look like? Well, we think that this can be measured by the number of candidates successfully gaining employment, their longevity in, with a particular role, the satisfaction the employers have with the candidates, as well as the satisfaction of the candidates with the employers. And so quantitative measures might look like um, the number of employers posting roles coming back to post roles that they've posted previously and they're coming back. So that might be their um, being repeat customers might tell us something about how this marketplace is working. And that we can measure the employer's satisfaction with the actual um, platform as well as a candidate satisfaction with the platform. And also another metric may be that the candidate's participation in the online community that's being created. So we see research being an integral component, um, not only to charting the success, but to improving success of this virtual marketplace. And as the director of a research center, that's what we're most interested in. And um, that's why we're so very happy um, to be partnering up in research with organizations like um, DXC, um, and the Autism CRC. Thank you for your attention. Um, I hope you have interest in this, and I want to acknowledge our project team um, who've helped us to build um, this marketplace and uh, our very strong steering advisory group who've driven uh, much of what this marketplace looks like. So thank you very much. And over to my colleague, Darren Headley. This is a button I have oh. started. Good. Okay, I'll be fairly quick. Um, we're doing a fair bit of research at La Trobe, and I'll definitely acknowledge our. Uh, sponsors of the research, particularly Michael and uh, DXC. Um, today I want to focus on uh, the benefits of, um, or trying to identify some of the benefits employing people on the spectrum. Um, background, I think we've been through most of this, the latest ABS figures around 40%, only 40% of 
um, labour force participant rates in Australia, which is a bit higher than the international figures, but um, the cost of autism uh, is uh, quite high for Australia. Um, but we also, uh, a study by Delotti um, Access Economics, uh, showed that there can be quite a significant rise in GDP by reducing the employment gap uh, between people with and without uh, disabilities. Um, we know that workforce participation provides social inclusion, economic independence, improved health and wellbeing to the individual. Um, but we also think that increasing diversity within the workplace uh, can lead to broad organisational benefits. But there's very little research around, uh, around this at the moment. So, um, the aim of the, the uh, what I'll present here today is to sort of start to tease out and try and identify some of the potential benefits of employing people on the autism spectrum from the perspective of the individual, the family, the organisation, uh, and we'll also touch on some of the economic analyses that we've been doing. Um, I'm going to be presenting some uh, mainly qualitative uh, information from focus groups and one-to-one -one interviews. Uh, with trainees from the DXC program, uh, the Dandelion program. Uh, we interviewed around 21 people for uh, the work presented here. We have uh, interviewed a few more, but uh, then uh, information isn't included here. Um, a small selection of family members, around 40 co-workers. Uh, these were mainly from uh, the implementation in uh, Brisbane in Adelaide, and uh, we haven't got around to interviewing people in Canberra yet, but uh, we're getting building up quite a bit of qualitative information. I'll briefly present uh, a tiny little bit of work from um, an engagement survey that we're doing with DHS uh, co-workers, um, but also some of the qualitative information from in interviews with those individuals. So in terms of the individual, uh, sense of purpose comes through as being something that's uh, quite strong. and. For the presentation, I'm mainly using quotes from the individuals themselves, um, but uh, these themes are really quite consistent between individuals at different sites, different implementations, doing different job roles. So the job provides a purpose, a challenge. It's a positive challenge, and um, just building on what was said earlier on about the importance of the workplace being a challenge for the individual. Uh, otherwise, we get bored at work. So. Uh, that's a really important theme that, that comes through for us uh, when we're talking to people. But you look forward to getting up in the morning to go to work. Uh, the next one's from a family member. So talking about um, their son who uh, was working in Adelaide, that he's now a contributing member to the household. It's good to his self-esteem. And he's sort of looking at himself uh, better. Um, and then from a candidate uh, as well, instead of becoming a financial burden, I actually became a significant augmentation to the household income. So this is giving back, being able to uh, give back to the family. Um, financial independence, again, is a theme that uh, comes through. Um, this individual here saying, but uh, I was able to have a little more, bit more money to become more independent. And uh, some of the, the gains in financial independence are quite significant. Um, Self-belief. It was shown that I can do it anything. Uh, regardless of my diagnosis. Uh, so being involved in the program, it's given me a lot of things to believe in. Anything is possible and I can do anything. And I think these are really important themes that are coming through because they do open up the opportunities for a career and, and to think about uh, not just coming in at entry level jobs, but also what, what's the next steps? Where can I go? Um, again, self-esteem, so uh, and being aware of this, that, uh, the changes have been to greatly increase my self-esteem relating to other people. Um, and pride in their work. And I feel like I'm repeating what's already been said today uh, when I've watched others um, present. I oh, well, here's my presentation. It's sort of been covered um, because these uh, themes are quite consistent um, across uh, people and um, really emphasise the benefits, I think, of becoming engaged in the, in the workforce and what that means. Uh, so we, uh, pride, um, it's great to be able to uh, have a cool job that you can talk about with all your friends and associates rather than the alternatives uh, of being on unemployment benefits. Uh, financial, so this is a, uh, and so this is uh, from talking with family. So he's bought a house and moved out. I don't own a house yet. Um, so uh, 
uh, and there's more than one individual um, who's been involved in this program who has uh, now been able to invest in, uh, in buying a house and uh, having property. So I think you know, that's pretty good. Um, I see improvements in adaptive skills, uh, just being more confident in going around places, uh, motivation, getting up in the morning, uh, not having to uh, have someone else get them out of bed, go to work, uh, but we see people um, are really quite keen to, to get to work and be involved in what they're doing. Uh, quality of life, so this is from some parents uh, that I interviewed at, um, in their home in Adelaide, and they said at, at one point we, we weren't even able to go out um, and, and they, they almost cancelled their wedding uh, anniversary, so it's quite an um, important event that they, they told me about. Um, but they said now, now that their son was involved in the program, uh, we now feel more comfortable uh, to, to go out, um, to leave their, uh, their son at home. Um, so it was really a... Uh, and, and this doesn't capture the, the whole change. It was really just so significant uh, for this family and the impact that it had on the relationships between family members. Uh, I want to turn briefly to the organisational benefits. So this is a, a very small um, uh, extract from a, a couple of questions of quite a large survey that uh, we've rolled out through the Department of Human Services. Um, but we're quite interested in, well, what's the impact uh, of the program on, on the co-workers? Uh, so these are all DHS co-workers. Co we wanted to know um, uh, how the program was perceived. And you can see here, uh, I think it's clear enough, that um, most uh, co-workers felt that the program served an important purpose, that it was a good strategy for the organisation, and that they believed in the value of the program. And when we ask uh, co-workers, well, what's one word which uh, describes your um, perceptions of your company or your organisation's involvement in the program? Pride comes through as uh, the most frequent response from co-workers. Um, and this is a, a, a large, um, the survey's from a large spectrum of people who were um, either involved uh, quite directly uh, with team members or employees within the program, or uh, people who've had very little engagement but had heard about the program. So, um, and, and we'll uh, look at this um, uh, relationship between these things in, in more detail, but uh, it provides a bit of an overview. We're also interested in, well, what's the impact on the individual's workload? And so there was concern that um, that uh, there would be maybe an increase in, uh, in uh, workload, and, and there was for some people, uh, particularly supervisors who work uh, quite closely with uh, employees from the, from the program. But um, remember that uh, the employees in the uh, Dandelion program were coming in with, without a, uh, often without a big background in uh, the IT work. So they were learning the job as they were going along. And this was fairly, uh, fairly early in the program. But overall, we don't see that um, co-workers feel that there's a significant increase in their workload. And even if they do, they don't necessarily see it as being a negative thing. Um, it, it, they also feel that they're learning new skills um, uh, through their involvement in the program. Um, and they t tended not to feel that they're taking on a lot of additional responsibilities over and above their normal job. And, and this is people who are uh, working um, with the, uh, um, the employees within the program. So it might be developers where uh, our employees are doing uh, software testing. So um, uh, in terms of... Um, uh, some of the interview data, so uh, people ha hear good things about the program. So it's perceived to be quite a positive part of, uh, of the DHS work environment. It fits with our culture of inclusivity and diversity. And this is uh, a, a value that's important, uh, we found, to people working within the Department of Human Services. Um, it's also something we see coming uh, through us quite strong in, uh, in uh, local government as well in uh, human services. So, um, co-workers talked about sort of increasing their, uh, um, uh, what they do. So, to me personally, I'm very happy that the dandelions are here. They give us extra length and breadth. Um, they talked about the vision. I like what the vision is. Um, I guess for the future, it's a great opportunity for those involved in the program. 
Uh, they've helped sharpen up some of the thought processes among the teams. They'll ask questions where others fear to tread. I feel like I'm working in a happier place. And I'm always proud to say that I work in an organisation that accepts diversity and, in fact, looks at it as an advantage. Uh, so these themes, I mean, they're the themes we talk about. The good thing, I think, from this is that when we go and talk to uh, people within the organisations, we're getting confirmation of um, what we really are hoping to see. In terms of innovation, productivity and performance, this was a manager uh, who um, worked with uh, the Dandelion team and, uh, and other teams, and he said the quality of the work that the team did for testing was absolutely fantastic. It was focus-driven, competitive in a good way. Uh, he had some comparative data to be able to compare that in terms of previous projects and testing results that we've achieved. It was very, very good quality and also the productivity was quite high compared with other contract teams coming in. So absolutely impressed with the standard of work coming out of the teams. Uh, much of the process is quite repetitive. Some of the Dandelion staff have actually built tools uh, in terms of innovation that we can use whilst we're performing our job and that's actually uh, made my job easier. Um, so one of the individuals told me, well, he, he kind of got bored with testing and he'd do the testing very quickly and thought, well, why am I doing this? I could build a program that could do the testing for me, which he did in his spare time. And then other uh, teams within uh, DHS began to, began to use these tools. So um, it's really value adding uh, to the company or the organisation. Uh, I acknowledge uh, work of Matilda Wilmot, who's here, over there, who's um, done a, an economics degree in the last six months and is working with uh, some of our leading health economists at um, La Trobe Uni. But we modelled uh, the government savings uh, just within the DHS program. So this isn't all of the, uh, the individuals that are uh, employed by uh, DXC, but it's, it's just those within uh, uh, the Dandelion program. Um, and we're taking into account the, um, uh, a few individuals that have left the program. It's uh, important to note and um, that uh, the reasons that some of the people have left the program are two people went on to be employed in graduate programs in DHS. Uh, so I've really... We talk about building a career, they, they made that step uh, and they left before the, um, the, the three years were up. So uh, move, were, I guess, identified um, uh, by DHS and were able to move fairly quickly into uh, positions. Um, one moved into a, a, a competitive employment outside of the program. One went back to study. Not everyone is going to find that um, the, the job's a good fit for them and um, may move back onto other, other things. Um, uh, one didn't uh, get through the six months uh, probation period uh, and three others left for personal reasons. But, uh, so there's sort of a bit of a mix there that uh, we'll point out. But uh, we took that into consideration in, in the modelling. Um, we took into consideration their previous employment uh, history. So we found that most individuals were employed part-time before coming into the program um, with around 12 hours uh, uh, per week of work. Uh, it's also important to to point out that that work tended to be in fairly low pa uh, paid work, um, uh, whereas uh, currently the average uh, work hours is around 30 hours a week as individuals have uh, the opportunity to do part or full time work. Um, so over three years just with that program, um, uh, there were welfare savings uh, we calculated of over half a million dollars, um, around 700,000 in tax gains, um, and in un unemployment uh, savings of around an additional 100. Um, so somewhere in the range of 1.4 million uh, just with that group of uh, people. So uh, quite significant savings to the government and um, our figures are, are fairly um, consistent with uh, those of uh, PwC who also did a report for uh, DXE technology um, depending on what factors you, you, know, you consider. Um, so in summary, um, Impacts exist on multiple systemic interrelated dimensions, including the individual, the family, the organisation and the community. I have focused on the positive uh, aspects here, um, uh, but I, I think the story is fairly consistent across sites and, and fairly accurate. We identified provided supports for benefits to the individual, family, organisation and colleagues at work, uh, savings to the government. Um, 
I'd like to acknowledge that each employee on the autism spectrum brings a unique set of skills to the workforce, leading to unique opportunities to organisations that are willing to support and embrace the diversity at work. And I think that message hopefully come through loud and strong today. Um, and our results hopefully provide a framework for future research uh, to um, assess the benefits of increasing employment uh, of people uh, on the autism spectrum and with other diverse um, skills who have traditionally been disadvantaged in obtaining me uh, meaningful employment. Um, it's a team that has contri contributed to this. We have a, a wonderful multidisciplinary uh, research team, particularly working with our business school uh, at La Trobe um, and internationally as well. Um, and some of uh, more details can be found in our publications there. Or please contact me if you'd like any of that work. Thank you.